Hello and welcome. This is TeacherBot. All systems are operating normally. Let's look at Blackboard Module 3. I'd like to look at M3Lab 1. So this video follows on from M3T1, so you have probably done this either in C++ or in Python. So what I want to do is set up a GitHub repository. Some of you will already have done this, in which case this will be pretty straightforward. If not, I'm going to walk you through the whole process. I will later pull up a video, I, I'm sorry, I will give you a document. This video is going to show you how this works. So let's say you don't have an account where you go to github.com. Well, I'll show you. Um, let's do this. It'll look like this. You're going to sign up and you're going to make an account. And don't pay for anything on GitHub. You don't need to pay for anything. Uh, everything is free. Once you have an account, you're going to hit New Repository and you're going to call it CSC249 for data structures. Now, of course, I already have this account, so you won't have this uh, error. And I could put it here. I'll just do, um, I'll put this semester. There we go. I I'm going to, just, I would recommend you just call it this, but I'll do this so I can do the demonstration. So CSC249, data structures and algorithms. You could leave it public. Now, this is important. You've always got to click add a readme file. Uh, I won't get into the details, but if you make a repository with nothing in it, it doesn't exist yet. So to avoid you having to take extra steps, just always add the readme. Now you'll hit create repository. So pretend I did that, and I'm going to now go to the repository. And so I'll show you my repository here. Here's my 249. Yours will be empty. Now you'll just have a readme.md. If you click the readme file, you'll see that you can edit it and you can provide additional information. So I'll just put here, uh, you know, module three, sorting. And I'll kind of tab this over a bit. Now this is using something called Markdown. It's not really important um, that you know how to use Markdown, but I'll make it look certain nice. So I'll just set here, it was last edited today, the 23rd. And sometimes you need to put a reason why you changed it. You don't always have to do that. So I'll just say, updated readme, which is what it already said, commit changes. And now I'll see that it added this file. Now if I were to look at the history, I could see that I've changed this file a few times. Now why is that important? Well, when you're updating your code, it's fairly common that you'll, uh, you'll get something working and then you sort of take a break and then you'll want to add a new feature or maybe you'll make a bug fix. And you want to have some sort of revision history, version history of what you've done. Uh, so here I've made these folders. Now I'm going to show you how you would do this on your own machine. Um, so just pretend here that I'm using, um, here I have this dev github folder I've created. So I, I have these folders here. Okay, so I'm going to put this here. Um, now you should have some sort of lo local repository structure on your own machine. Um, for now we're not going to worry about using a tool called github desktop. It can do this automatically. So you might just make a folder called csc249, may make a folder called module3 and then put your code into here. Now, if you're using code blocks or REPLit, either way, what you'll find is your file has to be called main.cpp or main.py. Typically, this actually is a little different, but, but in, a, in a REPL, uh, this file would be named main.py. Now, the reason for that is for a given project, the program starts in main, and so we, we call it main.cpp or main.py. That's why the name of the folder is so important because the name of the folder indicates the, the software you're building, the actual project you're building. And then the file name is where it starts. So this is my M3T1 that I did in the previous video um, and where we look at uh, insertion sort, okay? Or selection sort, sorry. And here is the Python versions for selection sort. Now for any of these, really all you're gonna do is go into Zybooks and take the code and copy it and then you may want to add some debug information. Uh, now, what debug information do you want to add? That depends. Uh, so in the homework, we talk about trying to track the number of compares and the number of swaps. So let's actually think about what this means, right? So uh, this if statement is a compare. And then of course, obviously this is a swap. So let's say I wanted to track uh, the number of compares. So I could say something like this. I could say, I'll use global variables here. I could, I could say uh, compares equals zero and then swaps equals zero. Don't know why it wants the auto default to 10. That's fine. So 
Uh, this is a swap, so I would s therefore say uh, swaps um, plus plus. Okay. And then a comparison that would be compares plus plus. Now what's interesting here is whether this if is true or not, you still took the time to do a comparison. Now why would you track this? Well, the idea is you want to track important operations. Tracking every single line of code and all the print statements, that's, that's too much to track. We just want to have a general idea of, of what is this, this algorithm doing to, to sort items. We compare the items and then we swap them until they're in order. Again, think about you have a hand of cards. You're playing Uno or poker or, or what have you. Um, you got a bunch of cards in your hand. You got a four and a seven and a one and a, and a two and a three. So you put the two on the left and the three on the left. Well, what you're doing is comparing and swapping values. So we can keep track of how many of those we did. And here I could do compares plus plus and swaps plus plus. And what I might do is, let's say at the end of my selection sort, add a little line of code here and say, uh, I'll do my debug here and I'll say in this part also, oops, I'm going to have a problem with my tabs. There we go. Um, print There we go. And then I might do something like this at the end. Now, if you're doing this in, now just write it like this. It compares equals, compares, swaps equals swaps. So if I were to run this code, it's gonna show me each of the way through um, each of these runs, how many compares and swaps I did. And then at the end, how many compares and swaps. So if you're doing it for C++, what would that same thing be? Well, you would say something like uh, static int Compares equals zero, static int swaps equals zero. And again, you would decide at the places where you do a comparison, right? I'd say um, compare occurs here, compares plus plus. And then I would go through and in my swaps, I would make the swap, right? So here I'm making a swap, so I would say um, swaps plus plus. Uh, I'll leave that to you to work with because this is part of the homework. It's not necessarily part of this assignment. But the point is what I've done is I've made some changes to my code. I'm going to save them all. And now when I look at my code, well, let's go with this one for comparison. Okay, So this file here, I've made a few changes. But if I look at my repository, when I view this file, I have not, it doesn't have the comparison swaps. So now, how would I update this file? I'll show you. Uh, I'll go back to my folder here, and I'm in the folder. And on this machine, I'm also in the same folder. All right, so it's important that I keep the same uh, path directory structure. I'm going to add file upload, and I'm just going to upload the new copy of this file by dragging it over. And if you accidentally copy a file twice, you can always fix that. So this looks like this is correct. So I'm just going to put here, the reason I changed it was uh, added uh, debug statements, tracking, compares, and swaps. So the, it, I may, for any reason, I might change the file. And I'll update this. So now when I go into the file, I can see my most recent history showed up here. And if I look at the file, this is the latest version. And I would go to the history, and I could see the changes. And if I click this version here, it's going to show me the differences between the two files. Uh, it looks a little funky. Uh, it's kind of showing all these changes here. But the idea is that part of the code changed. Okay. Um, so you could do the same thing for that. Now, once you've done that, all you want to do to submit this is to take the URL. Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to go back to just the repository itself. So click the name of the repository. It's always going to be your username, then the repository name, and then a path directory underneath it, like a Linux path directory. I'll take this URL, copy it. And what you want to do to submit it is go into here. And then you'll just um, put in the comments. And you'll have to do Control V. Right click, paste won't work. Uh, control V and then hit submit. All right, so that's the short version of how to do this lab. Again, why you're changing the code is part of the homework. I thought I'd show you here, but that's, that's how you create a repository and upload files. Um, the important thing is when you upload a file, you've got to make sure you have this path structure uh, there. So if you have trouble understanding how to lay out your paths, 
shoot me an email. I'll be happy to go over it with you. Okay, thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.